Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice for radio, so today we are doing a deck list video. We haven't done a deck list video for a little while, but I'm going to give you the same thing I always give you. A good deck list. When I'm giving you deck lists in these kind of videos, I'm giving you good deck lists played by good players that have seen success and that I think you should be having a bit of a test with. And today we are looking at the Golisopod Garboda deck with which Philip Schultz got top four at the Bremen Regional Championships just this past weekend. And this list really is good, ladies and gentlemen. Starting off, we have got four Wimpod, and they are the Burning Shadows ones, the ones that give you free retreat on the first turn of the game. These are very much my preferred Wimpod to be using, ladies and gentlemen, and one of the main reasons is they can be caught with Heavy Ball, whereas the Wimpod from Guardians Rising cannot, but you can also retreat turn one, make sure you've got the correct Pokemon active to end your first turn. And then we get to usually the main attacker in this deck, Golisopod. Now we've talked about Golisopod a bunch of times, but the best thing about Golisopod is his first attack, first impression. 90 damage if you were on the bench and became active this turn. Remember that if you evolve an active Wimpod, this doesn't count. And if you have a Pokemon knocked out and then put Golisopod into the active, that will also not count. But don't sleep on the other attacks here. Armor press 100 when you add a double colorless, take 20 less the following turn. That might be the difference between you surviving a hit and you not. And as a general rule, if you can get a KO with armor press, you always try and get a KO with armor press. And then crossing cut GX, 150 damage, and then you switch to the bench. With Crossing Cut, it very much is a use it when you have to. Save it, ladies and gentlemen. Save it for when it's really going to do good. Add a Choice Band to get a one-hit KO on a Tapu Lele. Or take a KO when you really need to avoid being KO'd in return, etc. Do not use it too early. Outside of that, we got free Tapu Lele. Now we're playing Energy, so you can attack with Tapu Lele, but really here it's for Wonder Tag. Get yourself the correct supporter on the correct turn of the game. And then a free, free Garboda line. Now this is the best Trubbish to be using as a general rule, because it's got the Acid Spray attack. Flip a coin, if heads, you get to discard an energy. Again, discarding that energy might be the thing that helps you to survive for an extra turn and really puts you in a position to win the game. Although most of the time you don't want to be attacking with Trubbish here. One Ability Lock Trubbish. Now there is an issue here if this ends up prized, but you'll notice that there is a town map in this deck to avoid that exact scenario happening. There's plenty of decks like Vikavolt Bulu, like Greninja, where you really need to get the ability lock. And only playing one of the ability lock Garboda is an issue, but you can play town map to try and help. And at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you need that space for other stuff. And then two of the trash Alanch Garboda because, well, it, it's just a great attacker. Your opponent has to limit the amount of item cards they use, or else things are going to end up going very, very poorly, very, very quickly indeed. Don't sleep on the fact you can use Acid Spray here as well. You know, one Rainbow Energy, double colorless 70, discard a coin on a head flip. But again, this is not really the attack you want to be doing. This is a deck that thrives on single energy attackers. Attacking with Garboda for one energy. Attacking with Golisopod for one energy. That's the plan here, ladies and gentlemen. And then there's a single copy of the Promo Magirna. Now, a lot of you might be unfamiliar with this. It's not a widely played card. For one colorless energy, you can heal 40 from one of your bench Pokemon. Might come in useful, I suppose, occasionally. But more importantly, one metal energy, 20 damage times the number of different types of Pokemon on your opponent's bench. Now, against the Rainbow Force Xerneas that does try and have as many different types as they can, this is going to get you an easy one-hit KO. This really shores up the Rainbow Force matchup. And if you're expecting to be playing against that deck, this is a great tech. Otherwise, I'm skeptical about how useful this is. Against something like a Gardevoir deck, you really need them to be playing five different types of Pokemon in order for you to do 230 with a choice band and get a one-hit KO. 
And don't get me wrong here, they've got Galley, who's a fighting type, and they've got fairy types, and Octillery's a water type, and maybe they're using the psychic type routes or Kirlia, but it's not going to be a great tech. You could put a Magina EX in here, which will get you a one-hit KO on Gardevoir, but then it'll generally get one-hit KO'd back anyway, so I leave that one up to you. And I love the rest of this deck, because it is Consistency City. 4N, 4 Sycamore. These are the two best supporter cards in the format. These are the two supporter cards that make it most likely you're going to draw into what you need to. You need to be playing them. N is good in the late game to slow your opponent down, give them a small hand size. It's good if you play something like a Metagross and they search their deck for any five cards, etc. But honestly here, ladies and gentlemen, these are just good draw cards. Along with a free Tapu Lele, it's likely you're going to draw into what you want. We got four Guzma here and zero Ace Roller. Now, you can play this in any proportion that you like. The thing with Ace Roller is it heals your Golisopod. But you'd better have another one to pop into the active, which you won't always have. And it doesn't really advance your game very much. Whereas with a Guzma, you just build up all your Golisopod on the bench. And then you just Guzma around. You hit your opponent, they retreat to the bench. Instead of using an Ace Roller to heal and hitting a new Pokemon, you use a Guzma to bring up their Pokemon while switching to a new Golisopod, getting the 120, putting the previous Golisopod out of harm's way, and taking a KO at the same time. I really like this, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's going to take a bit of time to really discover whether this is the best way to play this deck or not. The or Guzma Zero Ace Roller, but I very much enjoy the idea, and it's certainly something I'm going to be testing a lot, including on my stream this week, wink wink, I think it's really good, I think it's a really good idea, the Zero Ace Roller make me a little nervous, but I love the fact here that you're taking KOs, rather than going the more defensive Ace Roller route of preventing KOs, while your opponent also gets to prevent a KO, you switch to the bench without healing, using Guzma, but you also bring their Pokemon active to take the KO. Four Ultra Ball because it's the best way to search for Pokemon. And two Heavy Ball here. Heavy Ball is great here because it searches out your Wimpot. It searches out your Golisopod. It searches out your Garboda, although it doesn't get your Trubbish or your Tapu Lele, which is a little bit sad, but, you know, these things happen. And yes, it will get either of the Garboda here. So in terms of search, four Ultra Ball, two Heavy Ball seems pretty good. Four Floatstone is needed here. Firstly, you need tools to turn on Garboda's ability to turn off everybody else's ability. But secondly... It's just really good for getting out of the active so you can pop a Golisopod in the active. Hopefully, several turns during the game, you'll have a Guzma to switch for you, but you still need Floatstone when you don't have it. Or if you've only got one Golisopod, you Guzma, put something active, and then retreat it with the Floatstone. Free Choice Band is great because Choice Band does extra damage. Choice Band is amazing. It does extra damage. Doing extra damage is always good. Why free, not four? Space. Generally, free will be enough. Generally, free will give you one when you need it. And honestly, I'm sure if there could have been a fourth, there would have been. But we've only got 60 cards with which to play, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot do it all. Now, I adore the energy line here. Four rainbow, because that's all you're allowed to play. Four double colorless, because that's all you're allowed to play. Four grass. This is more energy than Naoto played in the World Championship Finals, and I really like that. You've got eight energy, which will feed your Golisopod, and though you've only got four that will feed your Garboda, that's more of a mid to late game Pokemon, so it doesn't matter so much. And then rounding out one copy of Bridget to search for those Pokemon, if this is prized, it will suck because then you're going to Lele, and you won't get the Bridget, so you won't get all your Pokemon out. Having said that, we expect Bridget to be prized one every ten games. And on that game, grab an N, you're still playing four Ultra Ball, you're still playing two Heavy Ball, you should still be able to get set up nicely. You need Glycopod, yeah, well you're playing four Wimpod. So as annoying as it is when your Bridget is prized, I think here the deck should be consistent enough that although it will be annoying, you should be able to set up regardless.
One town map, like I've said, you just need to be able to get your prizes. You need something like that single copy of Garboda or that single copy of Magina, etc. It's too important not to. One copy of Rescue Stretcher just for a bit of Pokemon recovery. Your lines are quite thick here. You should never need to recover Golisopod, for instance. But maybe you need to recover your single Magina or your single ability blocking Garboda. And finally, two Enhanced Hammer. I love Enhanced Hammer. Against something like Gardevoir, you're going to be able to get rid of their double colorless, hopefully slow them down enough to win the game. In the Mirror Match, you're going to be able to get rid of their double colorless, stopping them using stuff like Armor Press. There's just too many good ways to use this. Not to mention that although your Greninja matchup is pretty amazing anyway, getting rid of their Splash Energy before you take a KO so they don't recover the Pokemon is in itself pretty hilarious and that ladies and gentlemen is a pretty good Golisopod Garboda deck list good enough for Philip Schultz to be getting top four at Bremen regionals I may well bring you more deck lists in the future but as always ladies and gentlemen I would like to know if that's something you'd like let me know in the comment section go nuts be nice make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel follow me on twitter at the wassy and twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus pods etc you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcg radio and by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio